What is the worst part about being a YouTuber? For some, it's the grind itself. The self-imposed deadlines, the mandate to crank out enough content to pay rent. It might be easier for some YouTubers who have a staff, but I research, write, record, and edit everything myself. So it's like a one-person assembly line. For others, it's the fact that we are essentially making art, or at least some creative endeavor, but are forced to call it content. YouTube even changed the videos tab to say content recently. Content could be anything. A bunch of bananas in a barrel is the contents of the barrel. But I'm not making bananas, I'm making video essays about politics and sometimes Star Trek. For others, the worst part about being a YouTuber is the loss of privacy. Our job is on the internet, and while the internet can maintain some anonymity if used correctly and carefully, it doesn't actually allow for true privacy. For YouTubers, it is worse because we are forced to use social media platforms, often a lot of social media platforms, to promote our work. The YouTube space is highly competitive, and if you're not on Twitter and Instagram and all that, it's hard to compete with people who are. The YouTube algorithm will only recommend so much, and shoehorning ourselves into the conversation with social media is one of the ways to do it. That creates an uncomfortable atmosphere because when we ask for a little bit of privacy, a little bit of humanity, people will reply, well then you shouldn't have been a YouTuber and you shouldn't use Twitter, not realizing that social media is a necessity, not something we desire. That's not a particularly good argument either. Performing a career in a public space should not be the green light to rob someone of their humanity. Do I become less human because I'm on YouTube? What is the threshold for seeing me as someone who deserves to be treated however the public decides to treat me? For example, if a content creator blocks someone on their social media platform, either individually or through some browser extension that mass blocks dozens of people at once, someone who can no longer access that creator's account upon discovering this might make a post or tweet about it, desperately trying to elicit sympathy from their followers. I see this happen all the time, to countless content creators. To this hypothetical blocked someone, this is something happening to them, but it isn't. It's something happening within the content creator's account. The hypothetical blocked someone is just aware of it. If someone has grown up with social media so much that it feels as ubiquitous as the electric company, their brain tells them that not having access to a stranger's account is discrimination a very personal denial of service instead of what it actually is, the stranger's right to privacy. If I come home from a long day of pouring bananas into barrels, lock the door, relax on the sofa, and a random man passes by the door, tries to open it, and shouts at me that not letting them in is an assault, that would be absolutely bonkers. Bananas, even. Everyone else in the world, besides this random man, would uniformly recognize that this demand, this accusation, is nonsense. But some people don't see a stranger's personal social media account as their personal social media account. They see a personal social media account the way one would think of a public utility or a popular store. If they are blocked, they picture a store with a discriminatory sign that says, No, you or your people allowed in the window. Only it's not. A personal social media account is not owned by the public. But even if it were, almost nobody is blocked for discriminatory reasons. Not having access to someone else's life is not an assault, nor is it discrimination. It's simply the right to privacy, something we all have. Someone else does not have the right, nor should they have the ability, to cross someone else's clearly defined boundaries. Pretending that these completely ordinary boundaries are infringing on a non-existent right to bypass someone else's privacy is, I don't know, a little weird. If someone finds themselves blocked by someone with whom they have never interacted, that might seem strange or suspicious to the blocked, but it is actually the most normal thing in the world. In specific terms, it might mean that the owner of the account has employed a browser extension that blocks anyone who is following a particular account. If you follow a controversial account, you take your chances. Nobody made you follow that account. Another common reason is employing an extension or website that blocks anyone who clicked like in a particular tweet. 
For example, if someone tweets something racist and it has a thousand likes, presumably from racists, and you are one of the thousand racists, that might be why you find yourself no longer being able to access the personal social media account of someone who is hopefully not racist. In real world, non-digital terms, it only means that you can't open a stranger's front door, and inventing a scenario in your mind in which this is more pointed and discriminatory usually does not gel with reality. If the person finds themselves without access to the account but does not know why, they might default to some dramatic explanation, but the truth is, almost everyone who has ever been blocked was blocked for a boring, mundane reason. If you find yourself not being able to access a stranger's account, the explanation is almost never interesting enough to complain about it in public. Even if you believe you have been unfairly blocked or misjudged, I have news for you. Someone can be accidentally blocked, but nobody can be unfairly blocked, because you don't get to decide the terms in which you can break through a complete stranger's front door. The person inside does. It's never unfair because the terms of fairness are dictated by the person who gets to lock the door. It's not your home, and it's not your social media account. Now, sure, it's not impossible that you have been blocked because of some quality about yourself, some part of your identity, but assuming the worst and viewing this lack of access through the least charitable lens possible is usually without merit. On Facebook, a personal social media account is set up from the beginning with boundaries, who can and cannot access it. On Twitter, a personal social media account is set up the opposite way, in which the default setting is everyone having access, forcing the owner of the account to create boundaries step by step over the course of its existence. It's exhausting. Nevertheless, the end result is similar, but only the latter is viewed as an assault. In short, coming home and locking the door is not dehumanizing to everyone outside the door. Trying to break down the door or telling the person they are not allowed to keep them out is dehumanizing. This is all pretty basic and it's true of everyone, but content creators have to employ this more often than other social media users. I'll explain. Actual celebrities, the Chris Evanses of the world, get a lot of, let's say, intense people replying to them all the time. But Avengers don't really use their social media accounts very often and have people to do that for them. They don't need to figuratively lock the door very much, if at all, because they're not really home. On the opposite end of that spectrum, people who use their social media accounts to make simple tweets and posts do not block a great number of people either, but for the opposite reason. Nobody knows who they are. Content creators are in a strange position in which they need to be very online because it's part of their career, and they get a lot of intense people replying to them because that is, unfortunately, a byproduct of their career. Content creators exist in whatever the opposite of the Goldilocks zone is. In this zone, there is an enormous amount of intense people who believe they must have access to the content creator's account, and the content creator in question will probably end up reading this demand because content creators are not Chris Evans. Curating access to their accounts becomes necessary for their own mental health. Even though this intense person's demand is obviously unreasonable, social media platforms are so massive that this intense person is bound to find some people who agree with them through the sheer number of users alone. If there is one thing an intense fan of a content creator hates, it's discovering that, for whatever reason, they do not have access to that content creator's social media account. And, if there is one thing that an intense fan loves, it's complaining about it as if they have been assaulted, tagging the content creator's username, so that even if they cannot reach the account anymore, anyone replying will accidentally alert that account to their now public displeasure. The block was private. The content creator almost certainly did not reference it in public, and it is only now public because of the intense fan, not anyone else. Nobody was injured and it was not done in public, but the blocked person is now claiming public injury. If the intense fan is particularly displeased, they will create a sock puppet account to evade the block and complain more directly. 
Imagine getting a restraining order and then deciding that it's perfectly acceptable to covertly violate it, because how dare someone ask you to leave them alone? This is their fault for drawing personal boundaries! I have anecdotally noticed this behavior a bit more among younger people who were socialized with this now ubiquitous technology, but this anecdotal experience has about as much weight as a non-scientific poll. It's probably everywhere and common among everyone, in varying degrees. As an experiment, I am going to turn off the comments on this video by default. The comments were always off. It's something I have done only a few times before within over 450 episodes of Renegade Cut. If people complain about this lack of access to a complete stranger, they will prove themselves fascinating examples of this very behavior. The other reason I'm turning the comments off is because I cannot stomach yet another person sarcastically saying, Oh boo hoo, I have real problems, you don't, every time I have the audacity to show vulnerability in public. I'm no longer 100% sure I want to do this indefinitely, and I'll make some decisions about my online presence in the new year. For now, stay tuned for a more normal episode next month.